As winemakers and viticulturalists, it's very important for us to work in tune with nature uh, when we're actually making uh, great wines. So as part of our commitment to biodiversity, um, we're trying to do our best to conserve the Cape Dwarf Chameleon. We were particularly concerned, uh, with Chameleon being our brand, that we would have uh, chameleons in vineyards where we may want to be harvesting and wanted to make sure that we were doing the right thing. I work at SANB, which is the South African National Biodiversity Institute. It's at Kustenbosch. And SANB has the task of basically assessing biodiversity in South Africa. We had heard of the issue of chameleons maybe being in the vineyards and possibly subject to being harvested. And it, it was almost a bit of an, an annoying <laughs> reoccurrence that kept popping up in the media. So we wanted to just come out and sort of lay rest to the issue by actually having a look in the vineyards and in the surrounding areas. So we surveyed in the vines for at least a couple of kilometers worth of, of vines and pretty comprehensive across the whole vineyard. We surveyed in all the different variety of grapes and we found no chameleons. Yet when we looked on the outside of the vineyard in the vegetation around the, the cellar and in the other areas, we found an abundance of chameleons. When the vegetation is um, not of the same structure, then it seems to avoid those areas. So for example, monocultures, wheat fields or fields of grass or even fields of vines, the chameleons tend to avoid. They prefer something that has different kinds of structure, different kinds of plants growing and different levels, different heights of the plants as well. But we have to realize that agriculture is going to impact biodiversity and there may be some very simple and effective ways of combining the two so that we don't lose biodiversity but that we can still continue with agriculture which includes wine farming really.